Hi! Do you struggle with chocolate cravings that seem to take control of your thoughts and emotions? Well, if so, it's time to use chocolate to develop mindfulness and self-control. Let's go! So we can use those chocolate cravings, those cravings for chocolate, with three benefits. The first one is to practice self-control, which is a very valuable life skill that can be useful as far as food is concerned, but also other impulses like checking your emails or looking at your phone or watching a series, a TV show. Um, the second thing is that you're going to learn how to delay gratification, which means that if you delay gratification, you'll have plenty of time to make an intentional decision. Should I eat chocolate? Should I not eat chocolate? And really like your reason. You may notice when you're walking past a bakery or um, if you have a look at your pantry that there is chocolate. And you notice, as you notice, you perceive the chocolate around you or simply because you're thinking of it, you notice a food craving in your body. You notice that your body is craving chocolate. And the thing is that very often my clients and me likewise think, oh no, 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 I don't want that craving. And when we think, I don't want that craving, we feel a kind of reluctance, if not resistance. And if you're anything like me, then when you feel that resistance, because you think, oh, I don't want that craving, here are a few of the things that you may be doing. First, you may tense up, you may clench your fists, clench your jaws, um, you may also uh, kind of scream in your head, no, go away, when you think of that chocolate craving. You may also blame the craving for showing up. You may also blame the food, chocolate, come on. Why are you so irresistible? You may also blame the person who brought the food to, to you, like perhaps your partner. Um, you may also imagine yourself losing control because of that emotion, because of that craving. One of the things that you could be doing when you feel that resistance because you're thinking, I don't want that craving, is that you don't accept or you don't welcome the emotion of craving. And what you can be doing too is that you can tend to eat in the hope of making the craving disappear. And when we do that, when we're in that behavior, chances are that the result we're creating for ourselves, the impact that this behavior has in our life, is that we actually amplify the importance of the craving. Here's what's happening. Whatever we resist persists. When we don't want something, when we feel that resistance, when we're not allowing the emotion of craving to be here, and by craving I mean desire, like the impulse to have the, the chocolate or so, something like that, when we resist that emotion, we actually amplify it, we make it bigger. Because we keep on thinking of it, we keep blaming it, we judge it, um, and also to, we give up, we end up giving in and actually eating the chocolate, solidifying in our head the association, I've got a craving for chocolate, the only way to make it disappear is to actually give in and eat the chocolate. To make the craving disappear, I have to make the chocolate disappear, right? Which our brain is going to remember next time we have a craving for chocolate. Same thing, the same thing will happen because our brain is on autopilot. So it's important to know this so that we can't, we don't reproduce, repeat the same pattern over and over again. And what's really interesting in that instance is that the resistance we're feeling has nothing to do with the craving we're feeling for chocolate. A craving, as I said, is an emotion. An emotion is felt in the body. It's coming from what we're thinking about something. And so we could manage that emotion just like we manage other emotions, just like we manage sensations, uh, like a chill or something. We can manage it. We are designed for it to manage any type of emotion. But when we tell ourselves, I don't want that craving, there comes the resistance. So we are creating the resistance to that feeling, perhaps because we're also having an inner dialogue about that craving and perhaps the consequences, which may very well be, if I have a craving, the only thing I can do is give in. Look, I've got so much evidence for that, right? So no wonder we don't want to feel that craving. It makes perfect sense, except that not wanting to feel that craving is actually counterproductive. 
we're going to end up actually creating more of that desire because we're telling ourselves, okay, I want the chocolate, but I shouldn't want the chocolate. I don't want the craving. And that's building up this desire. The good news is that this sentence, I don't want that craving, is actually what's creating this amplified desire, amplified craving. We are the ones creating our intense desire and amplified craving because we're choosing to think, I don't want that craving, as if there was something wrong with feeling a craving, right? The craving by itself is not a problem until we think it's a problem. And when we think it's a problem, we make it a problem and we make it a bigger problem than it, it was in the, in the first place, right? But the good news is that our thoughts are optional. We chose to think those thoughts at some point. We don't have to. So when we think, I don't want that craving, we could choose another thought instead. And that's what I'm going to explore with you. So as always, I love to have three steps for anything we explore. The first one is to notice. So we notice that sometimes when we have an emotion, which is a craving, an impulse, desire to eat some food, we notice that we tend to tell ourselves, I don't want that craving. I don't want to feel that emotion right? That's the first step, noticing. The second step is to question. And the third step, as we'll see, is to decide. So let's see a little bit about those questions. What questions could we ask ourselves when our brain tells us, I don't want to, to feel that craving. I don't want that craving. And the first question could be, why? Why don't I want to feel that craving, right? What's wrong with that craving? What's wrong with that emotion, right? The second question could be, what am I afraid of? If we don't want to feel something, it's perhaps because we're anticipating that it's going to be horrible, that it's going to be an unpleasant experience. Okay, so what am I afraid of? And the third question we could be asking ourselves when we are having a craving that we're resisting could be, how can I allow this emotion to go through me without hurting me? right? Because when we're thinking, I don't want this craving, we feel the craving, we amplify the craving, so it's even more unbearable than if we just had the craving on its own, right? And this is exactly what I help my client do. I help my clients process their emotions, be it the craving for the chocolate or the emotions that they're trying to cover with a comfort food, which may be chocolate or pizza or cereals, bread, whatever, right? So there are two pieces to it. It's the First, we're feeling the emotion, the craving for the, the chocolate, and that may be that, that may be the only thing there is. But sometimes this emotion, this craving, this desire for food that we don't need because we're not hungry, can cover up another emotion, which can be stress, it can be shame, it can be guilt. It can also be, interestingly enough, relief. But whenever we don't know how to handle our emotions, food that we know very well how to chew, and we've known how to chew for some time, tends to be to the go-to, right? I don't know how to express my emotions and to feel my emotions. Let's eat instead. That's I know how, what to do with, right? So we've noticed that sometimes when we have a craving, we have a thought running through our head, which could be, I don't want to feel that craving. The second step is to question that sentence, right? I offered you three questions. And the third step could be to simply decide. So deciding means that either you decide to keep this model, I don't want to feel that craving, and I like it, I like not wanting to feel that craving, I'm going to stay with that thought. Thank you very much. No problem there, right? We are all at some point in our journey, we may stay there, there's no right or wrong, no problem there. But we could also want to change the way we think about it, right? So here are three options that I'm offering you, and I'd love to know what you think about them if you want to, right? You can write to me at nscoaching at outlook.fr. And here are the three thoughts that you could choose to be thinking or tweaking, right? When you notice that you have a craving for chocolate in your body. The first one could, could be, I'm having a craving and that's okay, right? We've seen that a craving is an emotion. We human beings have a lot of emotions perfectly normal. We were designed, we were built to have all those emotions, right? Nothing's wrong there. So the sentence could be, I'm having a craving and that's okay. The second sentence could be, human beings are experiencing cravings all the time, right? And generalizing, remembering that we are part of humanity, we're part of um, 
the this humanity, this group of human beings, and we all experience different emotions all the time, perfectly normal. This can help us, you know, not make a big deal out of one emotion, right? So that's sentence number two. Human beings are experiencing cravings all the time, right? And the third sentence you could choose to think could be, I don't have to either give in or resist the craving. There are other options, right? Because our brain loves it when it's super simple. It's either A or B on or off. I like to call it the switch, right? It's either I give in to the craving or I resist it, right? And But there's a battle then. Either I win or the craving wins. What if it didn't have to be this way, right? And this is exactly what I help my client with. I hope this video was helpful to you. I really hope so. And if you want more, of course, it's available. And here's an opportunity for you that maybe you won't want to miss. So if you're still struggling with either chocolate or pizza or cereals or any food and find it hard to stop, I can help you. First of all, you're not alone. I really want the, you to know this. Many people turn to chocolate uh, as a comfort food, for instance, when they're stressed, when they're feeling anxious or bored, or whenever they have a, a joyful emotion that they've never learned what to do with. It's totally normal, right? But we also know that having too much chocolate, too many crisps or chips, <laughs> or too, many, too much pizza, uh, it's not healthy for us. We, we, we don't feel good the next day, whether it's because we feel bloated or because we're feeling regretful and guilty, right? So we can see the repercussions, but there's hope. <laughs> With my coaching, you can learn how to manage your stress and overcome your cravings for chocolate or other foods once and for all, right? It is possible, that's what I've done. And together we will develop a plan, a personalized, customized plan that fits your lifestyle and helps you achieve lasting success. Because we don't want a success that is short term. What's the point? <laughs> I think we've done that enough already. You know, dieting, uh, finding a quick fix, and ending up actually with more weight than we lost. We don't want that anymore, right? So if you don't want to let overeating control your life, I can help you. You can contact me. I gave you my email address, and as coaching at outlook.fr. You can also use the link below this video to book your free overeating freedom call so that we can explore this newer, healthier relationship with food and, and eating. Sports are limited, so if you're interested, please don't wait. And if you know somebody who's interested, please share this video. Thank you so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.